This was probably the biggest pivotal changing point in my life right here. This is where I went from going through the system as a young man, you know, still have a little hope to being entered into a system that is so violent and corrupt that I had to adapt or die. And I don't tell you guys about my life or the experiences or my opinions to glorify this shit. It's the opposite. I've taken more losses in my life than most people will ever experience. And I'm not just talking about in the ring. I'm not just talking about with fights. I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, spiritually, on every level possible. I made a lot of horrible decisions. I had misplaced hate and rage, emotionally undisciplined, which led me to take things to the extreme. And I always felt like, why? I never knew why I had so much hate and rage. And, you know, after doing so much time and growing up in the system as a, as, as a, from a youth offender, teenager to a grown ass man in his 30s, spending his entire life, never experiencing prom or any anything, you come home and it's like, I don't want to hate anymore. I don't want to have any anger anymore. So I had to manifest a new world for me, a new life for me, because in prison, you're programmed who to hate, who not to like why you hate this group, why they hate you. It's like you're already enemies. And sometimes that shit can come out into the world. You have to shake it off and understand you'll never be able to teach your son, your daughter, whoever you want to be a role model for, be successful as a man if you hold on to that hate, if you live in that world. So I had to manifest a new destiny in that confinement cell, you know, seeing people just getting killed and beaten. And I had to really make a change because I was done with the fight and done with the hate and done with taking losses. And losses are a blessing in disguise. And they put me in some situations that were just unthinkable that anyone can survive, mentally come back from. And they showed me that all this chaos, all this like just diversity, struggle and pain, it built me to be a better man as I saw who I was and wasted potential is the worst thing in the world. And I refuse to ever, ever be that person again. And I'm not some philosopher that's, you know, this genius. I'm a dude that made horrible decisions, anger, rage, grew up in the state system since he was a 15 year old kid and learned from the pain and the struggle, how to be a better man. Learn that no one's coming to save you for your horrible decisions, that you have to face adversity on your own. But at the same time, nothing grows in a comfort zone. And if my crazy ass can learn to put that anger, that hate, and just be a better man, a better human on every level, be a role model for my son, then you can do it no problem. No matter what you're fighting, mental health, struggles, traumas, it's gonna take some time to heal, but shit, it can happen. I am proof of it, you know, and I'm still working on it day by day. So at this moment, I have put the knife to the dude's throat. Now, I don't know that these other dudes that we had originally robbed for their, their drugs and their stash, and that's why they started the fight. I thought this whole thing was based on just a bar fight gone wrong. I didn't know what was about to be in store for the rest of my life and how this would change everything in my storyline forever. So I have the knife to the dude's throat and I basically tell him like, man, it's a bar fight. Get the fuck out of here. And, you know, he's scared. Obviously, he freezes and we drive away. I think they got my license plate. I could care less because it was a bar fight to me. What the fuck are they doing? And that's when my dude in the backseat is giggling and he's like, I'm like, what's up, bro? And he's like, man, I took that dude's chain when I was beating his ass. And it kind of clicked in my head. But then I got the phone call from a mutual friend who was over there, more of an associate. And he goes, Viking, bro, that dude called the cops and said you put a knife up to his throat and took his chain. We still haven't put two and two together that these are the dudes we originally robbed. Yet he got his get back. You know, he couldn't beat us. So what's the next best thing? Put me under the jail. He said, cops are showing up here. I mean, they're coming in like SWAT gear. Like they have you as a violent felon that just put in a weapon to a dude's throat. Robbery, they, they, they have it like a conspiracy that we planned this whole thing. And I'm a violent felon already at that, you know, at the young age, 18, 19. And it's just, 
chaos. So we're driving and, and I'm arguing with him and my friend Chance, rest in peace, my brother starts beating the shit out of dude that took the chain. Like, why would you fucking do that and not say anything, bro? Because we're not, you know, we might be dirt bags and, and living like Wild West, fucking Tombstone, Doc Holiday, Wild Earp shit, but we're not chain snatching civilians at, at your local pub. So Chance is beating his ass. Why would you do that? We get another call like, bro, you need to go somewhere because they're going to your house. So they're fighting still. We swap cars. Our other friend comes that was there and I jump in their car. They're still fighting. We go to my house and they're in the street fighting. And I'm like, bro, we got to we got to disperse. I see the helicopters in the air, you know, so I run into my house. I see my sister, my mom. I run into my room. I lift up my little stash spot in my room and I grab, you know, some weapon and some money and some fucking whatever else I had in there. And I look at them and say, I won't be seeing y'all for a while. And I run out the house and I had a neighbor and he called me actually. He's like, bro, you need to get here now. The garage is open because he's seeing it from the front of the neighborhood. They got the dogs. They're like preparing to like close off the whole development. So I run into his house and we're just watching through the window. I remember handing him like a thousand dollars and I stayed there just living in the moment. At that age, I never had a plan. You know, I, I was just like, it is what it is. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'd figure it out. All right. So I basically have a warrant out for me for armed robbery, a robbery with a deadly weapon, battery with a deadly weapon to commit harm, aggravated assault, aggravated assault times two with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to commit armed robbery. All of those are punishable by life felonies, the armed robberies in Broward County. So I'm living just spot to spot, running and gunning, robbing and mobbing, just, just living crazy, hitting every drug dealer and we get pulled over in a traffic stop, guns pointed, felony stop. I think somebody told or whatever happened and I get taken to jail immediately for the warrant. Now this is where my life would change forever. I'm going in and I'm facing a life sentence at the age of 18 and I'm sitting in the county jail and it's like no bond and I'm in here the youngest inmate in the dorm and this is where I actually got the nickname Viking I always felt that I had to go hard I had to go extreme because I was young and I was afraid I always felt you know I had to take things to the extreme and in here I was the youngest inmate like I said I was naive to the adult system and I was facing a life sentence. So this is where I end up getting the nickname Viking from. I always felt very scared is what it was. There's no other way to describe it. I hit it with anger and rage and violence, but it was all fear. And all the stories I heard about how they treat younger inmates, I was scared to death. So I felt the first motherfucker that tries me, I'm, I'm gonna go out, out of my way and I'll die in here. I'll get a life sentence in here. I'll never be a victim. So a dude tried me over some shoes or something like that, but I looked at it like he was going to try to take everything from me. So we start fighting bigger than me, older than me, and he's, he's beating my ass. You know, I'm landing punches, but he's getting the better of me. But like this, in life, you learn the most from losses, for real. You learn who you really are, who your friends are, who your enemies are when you lose. Winning's easy. So anyway, as he's beating my ass, I'm still coming forward nonstop, taking the hits, throwing punches, taking the hits, coming forward. And he finally gasses out and I start just hitting him because he has no more breath in him. And I'm just hitting him, hitting him, acting like I'm winning. And he's like, I'm straight, I'm straight. And they're like, yo, look at the little jitterbug, he's a Viking. And they gave me the nickname Viking. Like I just kept, I was crazy. I, I refused to give up. I was ready to go to Valhalla right there. And now I'm in a system that I am scared but I have to be violent, I feel. I have to take it to the extreme every single time. And I spent about a little bit over a year in Broward Jail, and I finally go see a judge. I'm facing life. The prosecution's offering me like 17 to 22 years, and they want me to open plea. What that means is that basically I'm not accepting with the state offers, but I don't wanna go to trial. So the judge can give me anything from probation to life in prison. So I go in front of the judge and he says, Viking, I can give you life in prison. Do you accept the terms of a